Good day, this is Alan from What Kind of Man at YouTube with another mod line review, the Flames of War series of miniature resin and metal World War II tanks. I'll be looking at the British Matilda with the Scorpion Flail. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, it's a large rigging setup of a ball or bar flipping around chains to pelt up mines to explode. Historically this was not a very successful weapon but to this day is still used as a method of clearing mines during times of peace. Just a quick introduction to the line. Flames of War is a tabletop wargaming game where you have a set built diorama and field armies made up of points and through dice rolling and rules you try to in a role playing manner defeat each other. It's uh, quite fun. These uh, small scale models come in these tiny blister packs. I absolutely love the package design to the reason why I picked it up as an impulse buy. The artwork is quite appealing and with the extra sponge and the blister pack parts being set up as the kit can't be damaged with the separation of uh, metal and resin is absolutely genius. But closer inspection to the kit. It is kind of rough in both detail, sculpt and casting mistakes and the instructions is extremely simplistic and was hidden at the back of the sponge. Flames of War kits are normally very simplistic and have two to five pieces max including metal, cannons, turrets and tracks with a resin body. This one's an exception because it's a very rare uh, variant of the Matilda tank to the reason why I found it a very interesting purchase. Most of the time one would need to modify a airfix kit to get this model done. There's quite a bit of flash and poor marks on all the pieces. Some rough bits, imperfection and sanding needs to be done. Uh, the sculpt is okay, I've just got a feeling I've got the end of the uh, production run here. The first step in preparing these small resin pieces as always is to wash uh, thoroughly in a solution of detergent and water to remove any release agents. Uh, both metal and resin. Also a very stone warning at this uh, point if you are sanding these materials uh, they are carcinogenic when they are in dust form so a respirator or dust mask is highly advised. Now for cleaning and preparations. We have quite a bit of uh, flash and uh, pore marks on this uh, hinge piece and uh, this is pewter, a very soft metal and easily and soft to cut or cut with side cutters, not the same side cutters you use for styrene though. It sands up and cleans up very easily to the next image. It is also important for connecting butt joints and keyholes like in the image here are also sufficiently cleared up so they can plug together when glued. At this stage all of our pieces are ready for assembly. If you notice any of uh, the pewter pieces are uh, bent or warped, they easily bend into shape but uh, very thin pieces are extremely fragile and it's probably worthwhile re-scratch building them out of styrene or reinforcing it with a thin brass rod. Next is adhesives. As different to styrene, you want to use appropriate glues. Uh, the two I have on offer is two-part epoxy. Uh, fantastic for larger pieces for a extremely strong bond. Uh, and also it's slightly more brittle but faster drying cousin, super glue. Amazing for smaller detail, very fast dry. There's not much to assembly, you just have to follow the instructions closely as it's vague and be very very patient. Each piece does take a while to dry and after doing a couple of pieces you want to give a day or so to fully harden before further work is uh, taken. I have to mention, and you will not have to do this on many models if any, uh, gluing the tiny chains of super glue to the pewter rod was the 
biggest pain ever. That process alone took a few hours and super gluing my fingers together many of times. Also with Wargaming sometimes you like a little play value with the movement of the turret to point at other miniatures or the removal of the turret to symbolize a tank being destroyed in the game. I removed the um, ch poorly glued turret to the body and inserted magnets in each piece for that very purpose. We now have a finished piece ready for priming and painting. Metal and resin pieces do not take to paint very well and rub out in a very short period of time, especially acrylics if handled. So I splashed um, some Mr. Metal Primer on the metal pieces and extra etching agent and then airbrushed Tamiya Primer across the whole kit for a nice jury, durable base for painting to be applied on top. Next, a base coat of Tamir enamel black and followed by Vallejo Air uh, Tank Range colours. I decided uh, to do some research and stuck to Australian World War II colour scheme, which they never fielded a Scorpion flail before, but they definitely did have a few Matildas in the Pacific Theatre. I mixed a slightly lighter green with Tamiya and did some highlighting and dry brushing over to catch some detail and used Citadel black ink for uh, more definition to be brought out. Some small hand painted details such as little crevice in the rigging and silver weathering around uh, the chains were also applied for a more realistic effect. Once a f after a few coats of matte, uh, MIG production pigments were used to dull down the overall effect. With some leftover decals laying around and some Flame of War numbers, I've uh, finished this and am quite happy with the results. Uh, some pieces are slightly out of proportion due to its scale and material, though I'm extremely pleased that I have an actual uh, stock kit of such a really rare and unusual piece. This build was definitely a great break from what I'm normally used to and doing tiny bit of hand painting like the uh, wheel tracks and the little crevices and whatnot is definitely a challenge. I uh, recommend this to um, anyone who wants to have a go. Uh, a quick comparison to the last tank I built, the 72nd scale Japanese tank. And uh, yeah, bit of improvement. Thank you for watching and until next time I do have a couple of these uh, extra tanks laying around for a second round one day. Uh, for you who do not like uh, resin or metal kits there is a styrene version of the Matilda by Airfix and it's been re-released as the Matilda Hedgehog. You do not have to do the Australian variant with uh, the extra missiles on the back. It can um, definitely be done in the uh, Desert or English colour scheme and I'm sure decals can be found. Until next time guys, catch you later.